Well, I finally started feeling a little better. Get some energy back. Just trying to get back on bee stuff. So I'm getting ready to make my oxalic acid strips. Uh, I've got oxalic acid here from Florida Labs. Um, I got my glycerin from them too. There were a few other places a little cheaper, but it was just easier to get it all in one shot. I'm not going to do uh, all of it. I'm going to save out a 10-pound block because I'm going to do the vapor on Sunday and hopefully put these strips in at the same time. So uh, I wanted to save a little bit out and I don't believe I need all of it. I don't need a five gallon batch made. So we're heating the glycerin over here. I took the five gallon jug of glycerin, poured a gallon off, saved it because I use it for other stuff like the fondant and I'm heating up the glycerin and then we'll put the oxalic acid in there get it stirred up until it dissolves and as soon as we can get it dissolved we will shut it off we don't want it to get too hot so I'll get things set up here and we'll uh, pour some in So we're putting 10 pounds of oxalic acid into a gallon of glycerin, since I have uh, more glycerin in here, we're going to put uh, 40 pounds of oxalic acid in. And you want that to heat up just enough to go into solution, It'll the solution will clear back up when it goes into solution. If you don't want to get it hot enough to be volatizing it, getting it in the air, you'll know if you do, it doesn't have a pleasant odor and it will inhibit your breathing. So, uh, with this big a volume, it's not too tough. When I did smaller batch in the house, I kept the thermometer in it, so I was watching the temps. Um, but this isn't a whole lot of trouble, plus I'm in the shop and we're wide open out here so you get a few of these in there and pour the last one in we'll let it let this stuff start to dissolve and warm up it's cold out here in the shop the uh, glycerin's been warming for a while but get this uh, broke up a little so it's working then we'll go work on the strips so these are the sheets that I'm using to uh, make my strips with um, get them from blue pig they're water mats <coughs> they've got a perforated line down the center which works really well um, I'm going to cut them into strips here in a second with a perforated line in them. The blue side won't stick. Put those together. So when you take that out, that's enough for a box. And you just rip it in half and you put it on the frames. Um, it works, works really well. If you put them together like this, when the oxalic acid solidifies in there and you try to take it apart, it'll rip this upper membrane. But if it goes the other way, doesn't seem to do that so well this stupid GoPro keeps shutting itself off I have no idea why um, it's really starting to irritate me so I don't know where it shut off on the last stuff I'm cutting these strips um, I've got a jig set up to do it long blade works best short blades have to stand too tall so then after I get them cut I fold them over and I stand them in this nuke box that I've got a contractor's bag in. Now my nuke box has a bottom that comes off. Once this stuff solidifies and sets up hard, that makes it a lot easier to get them to come out. And then they're all in a bag and contained. And <clears throat> I can uh, then separate them out and get them in smaller containers. So I've got one layer running flat on the bottom. 
not flat but standing on edge like that and then they're standing up like this and they come right to the top of the box you don't want to get them in there just as tight as you can get them you want them to have some room the whole idea is that they absorb as much of this liquid we're going to put in there as possible so uh, i jammed in a few too tight all right i watched it shut off that time i got 94 percent battery and it says i have no battery don't buy discount batteries for your gopro they're pieces of crap so anyhow um once i pour this full it'll keep absorbing it and i want to keep topping it off and topping it off we'll show that in a little bit maybe if i can get this damn camera to work Well, I don't know how well you guys can see. I don't have a light to shine in there. There's a few chunks floating around. The last bag I put in was pretty clumpy, <coughs> so it didn't quite dissolve the chunks, but most of it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can see clear to the bottom of the keg now, and it was cloudy before. So as soon as it's it's done that, you're ready to, to uh, pour it. I think I might have just steamed up the lens. Um, so I've got the boxes sitting here and ready and I'll turn the spigot on and we'll see if some will drain on it. Here it comes. <clears throat> there was another battery shut down when it's got 97%. Anyway, we'll just keep filling this thing up. I don't know. Well, it's looking like I won't get both boxes filled up with juice, just the one. Um, and don't forget, people, I'm not big on the safety stuff, but this is an acid. It's a mild acid, but it is an acid. So, you know, take some precautions. Don't get it in your eyes. Um, you can get it on your fingers without trouble, but you get it on other soft spots, and it'll burn. So, so here they are all geared up, <clears throat> ready to get them out of the nuke box. I got these little clips that I <clears throat> put on a lot of my stuff to uh, hold things together. Um, they're really handy. They don't work quite so well in the commercial uh, realm because they're in the way, but I think I've come up with a way to use some of them uh, to hold the lid style I've got on and things. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and Try to set you up on the tripod here. See if we can dump these things out. I don't know, they're pretty darn tight in there. Last time it worked better, but it was a lot cooler. They're a lot warmer, excuse me. This stuff's hardened up pretty, pretty well. So. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to dig through it some and get some uh, alleviated. What the hell's going on here? So I've got these wire clips on my bottom boards that hook onto the uh, nuke, so the nuke, the bottom comes off real easy. Um, and then I can get these to slide out. It took a little bit of banging to uh, to get them to start coming. But now they're trying. When this stuff sets up, sets up really hard, especially when it's, it's cold out as it is. Uh, 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 
And there it is. Ooh, about knocked you over. Trying to see what's on the screen here. There you go. Um, so this is all the strips. that have soaked with the oxalic acid. And hopefully you can see it becomes solid, but as soon as you warm it up, even just with your finger, it becomes a liquid again. So I believe that this is set up to, uh, to work like the drizzle, and when they warm it up in there, it becomes liquid. Some of it runs, so they track and move around um, and works over time. Anyway, we'll get set up and start bagging a few of these. All right, so you guys know, <clears throat> I don't preach a lot of safety and stuff in here. I figure it's uh, up to you to do your safety stuff. But I will point out a few things. This is acid. Um, I've got some baking soda mixed in some water. Um, to defuse it uh, I'm wearing gloves because my hands will take it but I don't want to get it all on my hands and on everything else um, so if I take a little bit of this stuff I don't know if you can see it bubbling and diffusing the acid so when I get it up on my forearms it'll start burning I'll wash it there um, I want to be able to wash my tools. Got a knife I'm going to use to pull some of this stuff apart. I want to be able to rinse it off when I'm done. So the last time I did this, I individually wrapped each of these. As you see, they come off. There's a lot of extra. So that'll go back in the pot to finish filling up the box that didn't fill. I don't not doing them one at a time. I don't think I need to. Um, when I'm putting them on colonies, I'm usually doing more than one. So I think I'm gonna wrap them, see if they'll wrap five. So again, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff that needs to get just swept off of there into your plastic bag. And we will reuse it. So we're gonna try, try the wrapping five and five in the saran wrap like that keep the extras off So, there's enough to do 10 colonies right there. Uh, these will set off out of the way. And then I'll put them in gallon zip bags. When I'm done, as many as I can get in there. It's so it's easier to grab a bunch out and weed through them. Uh, this doesn't take that long and it gets it set up where it makes it a lot smoother in the field and to just have a big bucket of them you're digging through. Um, I can grab some and set them out where I'm gonna need them and then just start going through the yard. And I have to go, oh crap, my bucket's over there, you know, 30 yards away. Now I gotta waste time walking over. All right, well that's pretty much how this is gonna go for a while. So, I changed my mind and instead of the saran wrap started using my roll of shrink wrap it's wider and wraps around the ends of them better these things will when they get warm traveling around in your pickup uh, the stuff will liquefy again and start to run out so if you leave them 
you know, laying on one side like this, that you may end up with a couple on top that get dry. Um, so you want to flop them and roll them or get them right out and get them used. You want them to have extra on them. But you don't want, you know, so much extra that you're dripping everywhere. So this is what was left over after I've scraped them off. Got the extra that was in the voids out of there. That extra will go right back in the pot and fill in the old. The other one that didn't quite fill up. So um, I can treat 170 colonies out of this. About the same out of the other box. That's quite a bit for uh, for the five gallons of juice 